everyone. In this video, I want to talk about Wiglot. For whom I recommend Wiglot? Wiglot as a multilingual plugin or app. I recommend it for e-commerce stores. Why? Well, I will talk about the advantages. One of the main advantages of Wiglot is that they are fast. It doesn't slow your website. So when you are working on your either WooCommerce or Shopify store, you don't have to worry that much about that loading times of your website. So we already know that time, it's really important on any website. So Wiglot doesn't involve that much into your code since their translations are laying down on their dashboard. And thanks to their API, it's how the translation works. So that's one of the main advantages of Wiglot that they are fast and they don't get too much involved in your code. And also talking about the advantage of Wiglot and about the speed, is also the speed of the translations. Because with other plugins, and talking specifically in the WooCommerce area or WordPress area, we have WPML where it will take you time to translate uh, the translations or have a team of translator. And with Wiglot, since it is automatic and it's really accurate, that's the main advantage of Wiglot so that you can use it for your benefit. Another advantage that Wiglot has is that it also takes care about the SEO. So if you're aiming for the international SEO and all the metadata aspects, Wiglot also takes care about it. But now talking about the disadvantages, one of the main disadvantages is that if you stop paying Wiglot or stop using, you don't own the translation. So if you go back or use another plugin such as WPML, you cannot just easily grab all the translations and make all the imports so easily. It will take a little bit more time. So you must be aware of how Wiglot works. Also, another disadvantage that I have seen on Wiglot is the word count. Because since in my website, and it's a blog where I have more than 50 blog posts and they have more than 500 words, I reach the word count limit pretty fast. Why? Because they also have this certain pricing model uh, where you can select the number of languages. And since I wanted to have more than five languages, and if you multiply the number of blog posts times the number of languages times the number of, of the words that are included in the blog post, of course, I will eventually reach pretty fast the word count limits of Wiglot. And that means that if you reach the word count limit, then you will have to jump to a higher plan and spending more money. So now that I have been talking a little bit about the pricing, well, Wiglot has this free starting plan where you can try out Wiglot for the 2000 words that they can have. This will allow small websites to really test it out or even if you have already a kind of structured website, you can start to see if Wiglot is a good fit for you. But as you need more languages or need more words, you will have to jump to bigger plans and they will go from nine euros to 19 to 49 and so on to a higher plan. So if you have a budget and if you already see that your website is growing and you're making more sales and actually you don't want to take too much time on the translation, then Wiglot could be that option for you. And talking about some alternatives of Wiglot, well, as I mentioned, if you have more of like a blog or a news or a magazine, then WPML could be a better fit for you. Because if you're like me, then you want to have like more than three languages or two languages, and you have plenty of text, then with Wiglot, you could easily reach that uh, amount of word counts and you will might present this deal of questions of jumping to another plan or what doing with your website or if you have like a very simple small website and but you still have more than 2000 words then polyland could be a good option for you and now i will follow up with the small walkthrough with wiglot hi everyone so we will continue with this Wiglot tutorial. We are here simply on the plugins dashboard from WordPress and probably as you might know, and it's really simple and easy. If you already have this knowledge, I think this is the easiest step. 
of Wiglot. You can actually try Wiglot for free. You don't have to pay at all. You can start around with 2000 words and try and test how Wiglot will work for your website. As I previously mentioned, Wiglot is better, or in my opinion, it's better for a WooCommerce website rather than a website that, that has lots of text. And I will show you later why. So we will start the basic configuration. Basically, Wiglot will, will ask for the API key. So I'm here right now at the dashboard Wiglot. We will just give the name of our website. I will just give it here and we will search for WordPress. If you have basically any other type of platform, it's almost the same process. And we will have here that API key. We will go paste. We will set up the original language in case your, your language is not English. You can just select in here, change to Arabic, Bulgarian, Indonesian, and we'll have that destination language. So in my case, of course, I will use Spanish. And in case you have a bigger plan of Wiglot, you can select already the other languages. But as a recommendation, I say that it's better to have maximum three languages because you might reach pretty soon the word count limit. This is the configuration part of Wiglot in WordPress. Basically, we will see here the preview of the Wiglot language switcher. We can change here how we select here with flags. Or if you want to change even the flags of the countries, we can select here the US and in Spanish, in my case, I will go for Mexico. Or if you have, or if you are from any other Spanish speaking country, you can select here any other, any other one. Or even for French, Arabic countries from China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and so on. Even for Portuguese, you can select between Portugal and Brazil. And basically there are more simple configurations and we just will go directly to save. This, I will show later how to use Wiglot on Elementor because I think it's one of the most common um, platforms or plugins to be used to build websites or even DV. So basically, and I don't think that it's getting too common to use now the, the menu or even as a widget. But if you need it, here is the option as well. And this area of the URL exclusions, you can also see it on the dashboard that I'm going right away. So I'm back here on the dashboard. We will select the industry. What type of website do we have? And this is the back end of the dashboard of Wiglot. So I will go straight directly here to talk about the plan. You can change your plans and you can select according to your word needs or your language needs. You can switch between the different types of plans. So the one that I tested before on my website was this one, the pro version, but I actually stopped using it because I reached too fast these 2000 words and I needed to change to the advanced plan. So we can see here that on the yearly payment for a, for the advanced plan, well, my blog was, or has had at that time nearly like 30 or 40 posts with nearly also 700 words. So actually reaching this pro uh, word count was was like really easy. And because I just want to have like many languages on my website, of course, I, it was like a, a pain for me that it was like, okay, I don't have that much control on the words. That's why I changed to WPML. But the good thing was that 
the translation was really accurate and fast and I didn't have to spend too much time. And actually for paying around 500 euros um, per year was fine. But jumping up to the almost 2,000 euros for me, that the block that it's already growing up, well, it was like, a, no, I'm heading back to WPML. So that's another recommendation. So, and also advanced has the, now the URL translation and in comparison with WPML, you can also actually, uh, from the beginning, change the URL slugs, but it's way slower to work with WPML. So that was, that is one thing that I want to mention about the plan usage. Keeping up with the tutorial, we will have here, according to the languages that we have, we can manually review how are the translations done. So for example, here we have my WordPress. Of course, WordPress is not a translatable word, but my, to me in Spanish is good. Just another WordPress site, un sitio más de WordPress, and many other words that are correctly translated. So in case you need to do a manual translation, you can actually go back here to this area of Wiglot and do the translation. And also if you need to do some media translation, you can set up here the URL and also the translation of the new URL you want to set it in Spanish in that case. Heading now to the URLs, we can add here the scan of the website so that Wiglot starts also translating other parts of the web WordPress website. So in case you need like to rush on certain parts of the translation of your store or your any other page, you can just set up here and synchronize the content and it will be even faster. The visual editor will start editing just from the front end it might be easier to change to other language. For example, here down, we already have the language switcher. And if we want to change to Spanish, we just click there. And we can already see that the translations are properly done. But in case you want to change it from a visual perspective, you can just click here and just make it manually as well. As, but as I said, Wiglot actually takes care pretty good about your translation that you don't have to waste time in that part. In case you have a certain type of business name, we already saw that, that probably WordPress is the most common, but just to show you that if you set here some rules for a certain either business names or product names that you don't want to be translated, then you can set up these rules or a specific uh, word to be translated to. In case you need some professional translations, you can also have this option from Wiglot. But as I mentioned, Wiglot already has a pretty good um, machine translation. But also sometimes, of course, like the cultural translation, you should also take that into consideration because even if we speak the same languages, even if it's English, German, Spanish, or any other, there might be some um, phrases or expressions that are, are not meaning the same in different countries. Here, if you have the advanced plan, you can go for the translation URL slugs. This is a new uh, feature that Wiglot has. And going to statistics is the, for the pro plan. I just add the, have the basic plan just for the simple website and the simple show off of this tutorial. We can go here for auto switch if you need some redirections or if you also need some external links translation, you can set up this here on the settings area. And basically these um, tabs will be also the same that you can find in the WordPress dashboard. So 
either you can change it here or change it straightforward from WordPress. Also the URL translation, you can add here some rules so that you can exclude certain pages or so on. The setup, you will find the API key and for WordPress settings, even if you also want to translate either emails uh, functions or even the search and also the AMP, the accelerated mobile pages, it's another option that you can do. And if you're either working with two or three or more people, you can upgrade so that people can actually take care of your website's translation. Heading back here, we have here a dummy page that I created with Elementor. So I will talk about more about Wiglot Elementor. And we have here the basic language switcher. So we will go straight forward to Elementor. And just, if you already know how to use Elementor, there is not a big deal to show up how to use Wiglot. You can add here, or actually you can add another column and just drag and drop. We can set up here the margins. Let's say 120 and you can set up here, or even if you want to add another column, we have it here. We will set up here to zero and you have up here a column or we can set up even double. I will just drop here, set it up here to, I don't know, let me see if we 20% and you have it up here. So setting up the language switcher with Elementor, it will depend on your needs and your desire of where should the language switcher appear. We will hit update and we will go to the preview. And as you can see, it's up here and it's not down here anymore. So you actually don't have to worry about that much. Of course, if you add some design, different colors, it will have a different look and feel. Let's say here, if we add some color, I don't know, just as an example. And we can see that at least it's different. And we can switch here to Spanish. And we can see that basically the words are translated. So that's a good thing about Wiglot. You don't have to really worry about translations. I'm here back on another page. I will just click update. We have down here, we have the English text. And well, of course, if you know Spanish, it will be easier to read, but actually this is a very accurate translation. And also another, let me go back here also to show you the WooCommerce area. Let me skip some parts of this. We already have the, some products and let's go to the view of one product that I already have. So basically we have here the English text and also it will translate like these minor details that probably we don't read that much or probably we don't take care easily. Actually, Wiglo takes um, care about all these minor details about the translation. So we don't have to really wor worry about the whole setup because basically it's working pretty, pretty good. As you can see, everything has been properly set up. So another thing that I also want to show you is that, let me go here to pages. 
let's go back to the here to edit the same pages because I want to show you what's for international sale or also how Wiglot works with rank math. And I already had rank math installed and we can have here start page, the title, and I don't know, I will just write, this is a description. I will just set up, I will update. I will just view the page because this is the things that we actually don't see at first since this is the metadata. And as we can see here, well, in this plan, we cannot change the URL structure. So I will show you here first. This is the English version here. Here we are saying that this is the canonical. This is the main page and this is the local content in English for US. And here we can see that the site, the site name and here up here is the title and the description in English. So if we go back here and we switch it to Spanish, we can see here, okay, the URL is in the subfolder, but still with the URL in English. So for changing the, the URL, you might need the advanced plan. We go here and here is also the canonical. Here we will be set up that this is a, a Spanish content and that the title and description is also uh, another uh, translation correct. It's actually translated correctly to Spanish to the metadata. So that's another thing to take care of. Okay, and another thing that I want to show you here in my blog, but this is a comparison with WPML and Wiglot because for example, just because I have uh, here 10 languages, I will just go back here to the uh, page uh, code. But the thing and the difference you can see here is that actually WPML set as alternate and it sets also the HRE flanks for each uh, page. So this is actually meaning that this content it has alternatives. This is what I understand so far. I'm not SEO expert, but I think that it, this is a better structure for international sale to show up for crawlers and stating that there are uh, options for English, uh, English, Spanish, German, Italian, so on. And this is the respective URL. Okay, and in this page, there is a canonical. So actually this is stating that this is like a, the, there is a main copy of this uh, page. But as far as I know, and I, I understand, I think this is a better structure. So WPML actually helps even a, a bit better with setting up the HRE flanks uh, in comparison to uh, Wiglot. Here we have already the canonical, but here we have the alternate uh, HRE flanks. As far as I know and as far as I try, and so, and as far as I also getting uh, international traffic. So I do, as I said, I do recommend Wiglot. It's pretty fast, accurate, doesn't get too much involved on your website. WPML, I do recommend it, but more for websites that are content oriented because you don't have that limit on the word counts. So it will also depends on your needs. I hope that this video will help you. If you have some questions, don't hesitate, hesitate to write in the comments. Thanks for watching.